Hi there. Today we're going to be looking at replacing and restoring some pot metal parts. Pot metal is that really cheap nasty alloy and it was the cheapest thing that they could cast parts out of. It was used throughout all of the car industry because it can be chromed easily when it's new. The big problem with this material is that it doesn't age well at all. It breaks down into deep pits and it's actually the alloy itself breaking down. Some of the problems associated with it are not being able to polish all the pit marks out, sometimes it won't accept the plating very well and it will blister, and there's just a whole lot of things that can go wrong with it. There's no better way to describe it. This material is absolute rubbish. But we will do the best we can with what we've got and we will see how good we can get it. First of all, we've got to get this booked in, photographed, and now we can put that with the job and get it into the workshop. So now we're in the stripping room because the first job that we've got to do is we've got to remove all the original plating back down to the bare metal so that we can start again. To do this we've got to wire it all up on copper wires so we can pass an electrical current through it similar to electroplating but we're going to actually reverse the polarity and plate the old plating off. Here it is going into the stripper tank which is mostly sulfuric acid with some other things like glycerine in it. Now you can see it fizzing away as the old plating is being removed. Now that it's turned it's time to remove it from the tank. And the acid swilled off in fresh water. Once the water's dried off these, they'll be ready to go into the polishing shop for the next stage. The first operation we've got to do is to remove all of the marks that are in it. And this is what we call cutting out, because we're going to cut all those marks out of the item. With these pot metal or Mazak parts or whatever you name that you use for it, a lot of the marks aren't actually from corrosion. They're the zinc alloy itself breaking down and it breaks down into deep pits. And we're gonna try and polish these out. You can't always do it, but we're gonna try our best. What makes it more complicated is the complex shapes that these items are cast into. We've got to try and polish the marks out while retaining the detail and the shape, which is a bit of a tall order, but we are pretty good at it. This material doesn't create sparks, but you can see a bit of dust coming off it now and then as metal's being removed. get to as many parts as possible with about before moving on to one of these tools to get into the little recesses that you can't. This is a, a mop that's stitched together, a stitch mop, and it's dressed up with an abrasive compound.
moving on to a different type of tool. This one's not made of bits of cotton stitched together. This is actually made of felt. So you can shape a felt and then dress it up to what you need with what a braid is. When you're doing a job like this, you need a little arsenal of different tools to get into different nooks and crannies. There you see a tiny tool for getting into the corners. All these small ones here are little tiny felts that we've dressed up. Now we're moving on to another stitch mop that's been dressed up with a braid. The advantage of this is because it's flexible, you can get it to run into that little recess that he's polishing just now. With an abrasive belt, you can't get into those areas. You would just dig them out and make a mess of it. These are ready to go into the plating shop. With these, we're going to put a coat of copper on them to build them up. If they were brand new, it wouldn't require that because when this stuff is new, it's got a very fine surface finish that requires minimal polishing. This is the first visit into the plating shop for these items. The first thing we've got to do is wire them all up onto copper wires and copper hooks so that when they go in the tank we can pass an electric current through them. That's the reason it's called electroplating. Although this procedure seems pretty simple, you've got to make sure that they're all wired up to get a good electrical contact and also in the correct orientation so that they plate properly. Now it's into the cleaning tank. This is a hot soapy cleaner and we're going to make sure that there's no traces of dirt, grease, fingerprints, anything like that because any of that will stop it plating properly. Once these are all thoroughly wiped down, it now goes into the electric cleaner. And in this cleaner, we pass an electric current through it. And what this does is it removes any oxide film that might have formed on the surface of the work. This makes the surface what we call active, because if it's not, then it's passive and it will plate, but it won't stick properly. then we're into the 
first plating tank which is the cyanide copper as it's plating it actually splits the water back into oxygen and hydrogen and that's what you can see fizzing away there once it's been in there for a few minutes and it's of lovely salmon pink colour this is when they're ready to go into the next process the next process on this occasion is going to be a high build acid copper if they were new pot metal or mazak parts they could go straight into the nickel tank this build up of copper now enables us to do some more polishing and improve the surface finish Once the water's dried off them, they're ready for more polishing. Now we're back into the polishing shop for the second time and we're going to polish up all of these copper plated parts to really make them shine and give them a great finish so that we can nickel and chrome them and make a nice job of them. Just going over them with a very fine abrasive belt. This is a 600 belt. This will just remove any little minor imperfections that are still there. The reason why we use a high build copper in the previous plating stage is so that we've got a much more stable surface to polish than the zinc itself. Now it's time to really build the shine on these and bring them to a mirror finish. What we're using here is a soft mop, a stitch mop again like we used previously, but this is dressed up with a much finer polishing compound.
just a case of carefully working through each component and making sure that it's all beautifully polished, ready for nickel and grey. Little and often is the key with polishing compounds. Now the polishing's finished, they're ready for their final plating. Now we're into the plating shop for the final time where we're going to apply the nickel and chrome layers. As before we're going to wire these items up onto copper wires to pass a current through them but it's a little bit more intricate this time because we've got to use insulation pieces so that we can get the chrome layer which is actually very difficult to get to plate where you want it to where we need it back into the hot soap cleaner which is just a soapy cleaner and then we're going to make sure that all of these are given a thorough wipe down to remove any traces of dirt and grease. back into the electric cleaner and it's the same procedure again pass a current through it and that will remove the oxides from the surface to make it active to accept the plating so that it all adheres properly now we're going through a counter flow rinse system and we're going from dirty water to progressively cleaner water This last tank is a dilute acid just to remove any traces of the cleaning solutions. If we don't do that then they would come out of the nickel stain. So now it's into the nickel tank. Now this is where all of the good looks and the weather protection come from. So this is basically the most important plating layer there is. After setting the power depending on the surface area in the tank, it's time to let it cook away for an hour or so to put a nice deposit on. There you can see how all of the shine and all of the good looks are from the nickel layer. After swilling the solution off, going to be time to move along to the chrome tank. The chrome is literally a flash of plating. It's only in there for about, on small items like this, about two or three minutes. It's not normally any thicker than 200 thousandths of an inch thick, the chrome layer. 
so it is really very thin. But the big advantage is chrome is a noble metal so that it will not tarnish. And it's these properties that it's used for on top of the nickel. After the solution's rinsed off, it's neutralised. And after it's neutralised, it's just a rinse in some clean water. Once the water's dried from them, they'll be ready to inspect and make sure that they're in good condition. So now all the plating's finished, it's just time to inspect them and make sure that they're all right for the customer. So the first thing to do is remove all of the components from the wires so we can get them on the bench and start having a look. As you can see, even this relatively simple end part is still time consuming and laborious. Now it's time to remove all the watermarks, so a bit of polish on them, so we can give them a wipe over and see what we've got. Once all of the items have been wiped down, they're ready to be packaged for the customer. I'm quite happy with how this job's come out, but before I show it to you, we need to have a conversation about this material, whether you call it pot metal, mazap, monkey metal, or any other name that you know for it, one thing that is certain is it is absolute rubbish. It was rubbish when it was new and it's old rubbish now. Back in the day, I know that my dad worked for a company that did car handles by the thousands and they actually used to polish with a bin by their machine so that they could throw away the ones that were no good, even at the polishing stage. We don't have the luxury of a never ending supply of parts, so we can only do the best that we can with the parts that you give us. So let's have a look at these parts and see how they came out. On the whole, this job's come out pretty well and I'm quite pleased with it. However, on closer inspection, if we have a look, we will find some defects. If you look here, there's some pitting. Now, we can't remove this without losing all the detail. The problem that you have with zinc alloy is it's used to cast complex shapes. Here's a different job that we haven't done yet. Although we can polish these areas here, we can even make special tools and polish into this recess. 
where this goes in here, we're not going to be able to get right in there to polish it out. So we can't remove all the pitting. We would have to remove all the detail from this casting to do it. Due to complex shapes, you can be limited on to which areas you can get to to polish. That's the same problem that we've had with this Chrysler job. On this part here, you can see there's a blister that's been raised. Normally the cause of a blister is porosity in the material. So it's porous and soaking up different solutions like a sponge. Here's a piece of scrap pot metal. Here there's porosity in the casting now. If this won't polish out, then you're going to get blisters appear and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't overcome porosity in the casting because it prevents the first layer of plating from sticking to it. Here's one last look at these finished pot metal parts and a little reminder of what they looked like before we restored them. If you want to know more about the plating process, then you need to look at this video here, where you will learn a lot more about restoring a set of bumpers.